Well, we just heard Vladimir Zelensky speaking at that summit in um, Munich, saying that we can get our land back, Putin can lose. Is he right, do you think? Well, not in the short term, it has to be said, because obviously the loss of Advika will be a blow to the Ukrainians. They've spent so many months and they've lost a lot of soldiers, a lot of equipment uh, defending that city. And again, it's sobering news for the Ukrainians that the Russians, despite enormous losses, have pressed forward. Uh, they've been able to fire 10 times more shells than the uh, Ukrainians. They've also brought their air power to bear, uh, dropping 60 bombs a day on the Ukrainian forces. And so it was only prudent, really, that Zelensky should could beat a tactical retreat uh, before the Russians surrounded the Ukrainian forces and forced a, a mass surrender. So in the short run, it does suggest that the Ukrainians, instead of planning offences of their own, have got to hold their line throughout the winter and probably through the, the remainder of 2024 in the hope that the Western arms deliveries, particularly from the United States, resume uh, as they were over the last uh, two years. Ukraine can recruit more soldiers and ramp up its domestic production. So yes, in the long term, it's not impossible to lose a battle is not to lose a war, uh, but certainly uh, uh, the Russians seem to have the advantage going ahead uh, into the spring. And tell us more then about what this does mean for Russia, this withdrawal from Avdivka uh, by the Ukrainian troops. Is, is it a big victory for them? Will it change the, the, the front line? Will it change the fighting significantly? Uh, it, well, obviously, the Russians will play it up. Uh, you would expect uh, President Putin to do precisely that, particularly as he goes forward uh, towards the uh, elections in March, even if the result there is is not in doubt. And uh, although the Ukrainians have lost a lot of troops defending the place, the Russians have lost far more estimates of 20 to 25,000 casualties and a lot of equipment trying to take the place. So it would have been, I think, a psychological blow for Russia, given the resources that it's put into capturing Advika, to not achieve uh, that objective. But this town is not considered by Western defense strategists to be of great strategic significance. Uh, uh, it's not a city. It, it's not a vital communications link. If the Russians are not able to sort of push out quickly from Medvika to take a lot of more territory uh, beyond, uh, then it, the damage can be limited. The key thing now is for the Ukrainians to fortify their lines, uh, prevent the Russians having a breakout, but realizing that the front is still 1,500 kilometers. That's a big line to defend, and Russia will be pro being along that front for further signs of Ukrainian weakness. And at the security conference in Munich, uh, we're hearing, you know, France, Germany pledging more support for Ukraine. How does it measure up to what Ukraine currently needs? And are there hopes that the US Congress will agree to approve more aid? And, you know, can it really shift things as we pre approach the two year mark of this war? Well, everybody who supports Ukraine will be hoping, of course, that the U U.S. Congress will finally come over the line with the $61 billion aid package, which is obviously crucial for the long-term uh, rebuilding and reinforcement of the Ukrainian army. Uh, uh, but although there was a little bit of hope uh, uh, last week when the Senate uh, approved quite, with quite a large majority a package of $95 billion, uh, including that support for Ukraine, there was hope that the House would take it up immediately. But those hopes have been dashed. Uh, the uh, Speaker of the House, uh, Mike Johnson, seems to be in no hurry. There's talk of not taking up the package until March, uh, uh, at least for another month. So it's good that in the meantime, the Europeans, the French, the Germans, the Brits, British already with a package of 2.5 uh, uh, billion uh, pounds are able to fill that gap. Uh, there's been some good news for Zelensky in Munich in terms of more French cruise missiles, uh, a package of 8 billion now from Germany. Uh, that will help to fill the gap. But of course, the big problem is not just committing the money, it's actually converting that into tanks and artillery shells that arrive on the battlefield. And they are uh, clearly uh, ramping up European defence production. It's not going to happen overnight. So the trick going through this winter is how do we keep Ukraine alive uh, and hold that line uh, before that money can be converted into real uh, ammunition and real missiles? Jamie, great as ever to get your thoughts on this. Thank you so much. Jamie Shaver.